household ammonia is a solution of a weak base NH3 in water. List in order of descending concentration all of the ionic and molecular species present in a one molar aqueous solution of this base. Okie dokie. So it looks like we have a weak base NH3 and we're basically reacting it in water. So it seems like they're trying to tell us a balanced equation. From there, we could find out what all of these ionic and molecular species are. But the first thing we got to do is we got to write out a balanced equation. So here we go. NH3, that's the weak base. Maybe I'll just say that here. Is reacting, so plus H2O. And now since NH3 is a weak base, I mean, they did say that here, that means that we have to be in equilibrium. It will not be a 100% dissociation. 100% dissociations are only for strong bases and strong acids. But since they said that we're a weak acid, or sorry, a weak base, we have to write these equilibrium lines. Now we just got to figure out, well, what's going to be the two products? Well, this is an acid-base reaction. Now, technically, water is neutral, but in this instance, if you're showing that you have a base, water will act as an acid. So it has the acid properties to act as an acid, and what do acids do? Or what does base do? I guess we'll start on the left-hand side, right? Well, I always like to talk about acids first. <laughs> so what do... What is an acid going to do? When we say acid, we're talking about Bronsted-Lowry. Remember, the acid will always lose the one hydrogen, right? And on the flip side, the base will gain the one hydrogen. So in essence, if I just write this out, right, as, let's just say, H, let's bring this over, right? And let's just say that I had one extra hydrogen, this hydrogen will get lost and get transferred to the weak base. So you have one more H on this and one less H for the water. So let's write that out. Water is going to lose the hydrogen, and when it does that, it turns into its conjugate base. So it won't be H2O, it will just be, you could say HO, but we don't write it like that. We write OH, and we should know that OH is hydroxide. Remember, if you're turning into your conjugate base, you're always going to minus one charge, right? So this would be a negative one charge. And then do the same thing for the weak base. So this would be plus. It won't be NH3. The base gains the hydrogen, so it turns into an acid. NH4, and that would be plus, because anytime you pick up a hydrogen, you're going to plus one to the overall charge. Okay, so we have four species. We're getting there. So ionic just means all the ones that have a charge. So I have two ions here, OH minus and NH4 plus, and then my molecular species are the ones that don't have charges, so that's the actual ammonia and the H2O. Okay, so now all we have to do is we have to find in decreasing concentration, which means that we're going to start up with high concentration. I'll just put high C, O, and C. And then we got to go, ooh, we have to list all of these from high to low concentration. Now, another way to say high concentration is, you know, the entities or the species that you have a, a lot of. And then low concentration just means that you have a little of these. Okay. Now, before we start this, there's one little catch here, guys. We have four species, but there's secretly one more. This comes from the equation that we know and love, Kw equals H plus times OH minus. If you have an OH minus, especially if you're in aqueous solutions, you will have your H plus concentrations. Now, just because it wasn't stated in here doesn't mean that you don't have it. 
it wasn't stated because this was a base, and bases will always produce OH minuses. But there are some H plus ions still roaming around in the solution. So that's the hidden species. But just know that if you have predominantly OH minus, you will not have much H plus. So the OH minus is the base component. If you're a base, you'll have more OH minus than your H pluses. All right. So there is a secret hydronium ion here, which is H plus. Um, we could also call this as, remember, this is the same thing as H3O plus, but I'll call it H plus. All right. So actually, let's just get rid of that. We'll just call it H plus. So there is a secret H plus concentration. So now, which one out of these five now would we have the most of, right? Well, we have one molar solution, aqueous. It's in water. The solvent is water. You have only a, you know, X amount of ammonia in water. So water is surrounding the ammonia. So the one that you would have the most of is the water. So that's what I'm going to start here. So H2O, we have the most of, no doubt about that. Now comes the next one. So I'll give this one like a check. We did that one. Now, which one comes next? Well, this comes from the idea that you're starting off with a weak base. If you're starting off with weak bases or weak acids, I don't care which one it is, but the concept here is that it has to be weak. Weak acids and weak bases do not, so they don't dissociate well, meaning that they will not break down very well. They will hold to what they are in the beginning. So there will be some products, but if you're comparing the products that you have to what you started with, nothing really is going to be made it's predominantly still going to be in the weak base form. So you will have some of these, but since it's a weak base, NH3 will, you know, there will be more of NH3 than of what your products are made. So this would come next. You would still have way more NH3 than you would have your ions that are produced. So that's the next one. So we're getting there. Little by little. So that's a check. Now we have three of these to deal with. But maybe it's easier to work backwards. Which one out of those three would we have the least of? Well, these two were in the actual reaction, but this was hidden. And remember, if we produced OH-, which is what we did we probably won't have a lot of H+. I mean, very, 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 very minuscule number. So since we're in basic land, the H+, isn't going to be so high. That's going to be the lowest of the low. So we know that H+, is going to be the lowest of the low possible here. It wasn't even in the balanced equation. So that's a check. Now we got to figure out these. But remember... It's in a nice little ratio, right? And did we start off with any of these? No. All they told us is that we had one molarity of the NH3. So we didn't have any OH- and we didn't have any NH4 at the beginning. But we will make some of it, you know, once the reaction is complete. But if it's a one-to-one -one reaction, whatever you make of OH- should equal how much you made of NH4 positive. So these two should be equal because you didn't start with any of them. So they should be equal. So they're kind of going in here. And also the idea is that they have to be less than the, you know, the weak base to start with. So these would definitely be equal to each other. But then H2O is way greater than NH3 because it is the solvent. 
Since this is a weak base, it won't dissociate as much into its ions, so you would still have way more at the end of the day. And then since this one wasn't even in the balance equation, that one would have to be the lowest. These are your two products. You didn't start off with any of them. According to the ratio, it's a one to one. So whatever you make of one, you will make the same for the other. And finally, we arrive at our lovely answer. And that's it, guys. Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for viewing the video. I really hope you guys are having a great day out there, all right? I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.